Hi guys, and before your very eyes, you can see the Barex Desire RD box that's battered to hell. This is how it arrived through the post. Well, having a look inside it now, we've got a nice, clear, very brief, certainly very basic instructional booklet, but I guess it's not that complicated device anyway. Looks pretty good. So far, so good. Well, I'm not buying this item for the box, am I? So let's have a look at this device. Wow. Well, it looks nice. A sort of burnt orange, I guess that's not bad. Would have preferred a red myself. Uh, and we've got a red dot sight system here that comes with it, hence the Bear X Desire RD. Stands for red dot, of course. Well, there's a few bits in here. Well, we've got the string. I guess that's pretty good. Certainly need that. And we've got the forward grip. It looks like a Picatinny rail thing. And what do we have here? Oh, here the attachments for the limbs. And it looks like we've got three bolts that come with it. Ah, oh, a little bit surprised on this because if you try and buy these separately, these are quite expensive. Um, feel a bit cheapy to be honest with you, and they're not even low good up. But anyway, let's look at the rest of it. We've got the limb there, we've got a stringer. Let's just check around the box. Very damaged as you can see. No, that's it. Obviously it looks like someone's checked it or quality checked it because it wasn't even taped up. Uh, but the item hasn't got fingerprints on and uh, all looks good apart from the box. I'm going to put the specs on the screen about now. Uh, the speed off the top of my head is 175 feet per second and it's a 60 pound draw weight and uh, it's quite small to be honest with this and it feels quite light in the hand. Overall quality feels pretty good at this stage. Why would you buy a pistol crossbow, you might ask? Well, that's a good question. I certainly wouldn't use it for hunting, uh, but I would use it for target plinking and having fun in the garden. With a 60 pound draw weight, it should have a good distance, or certainly a striking target distance, of about 25 meters. Um, I'm going to try it at my home range, which is 12 meters long, or thereabouts. Now to the pistol crossbow itself. Wow, this actually looks really nice. Um, it feels nice in the hand. Uh, it's got a nice rubbery sort of texture here to the grip, so that'll be quite nice, especially if you've got sweaty palms. I don't suffer with that luckily, but if you did, then you're going to be pleasantly surprised. It doesn't feel heavy. It's got little iron sights there uh, that come as standard. It does come with a red dot sight system, um, but uh, from what little I've seen of it so far, it looks very lightweight. So anyway, we'll see what that's like further down the line. Uh, looking at the front here, we've got a front grip and that's for you holding or putting in the ground when you want to try and cock it. You should be able to use it by hand though. It's designed for your hand not to stick in the floor incidentally. Um, if we look at the rear here, uh, we've got those sights again and we've also got this release button which allows you to cock it. Mm -hmm. Obviously it's not going to be as easy as this when it's under tension, um, but it feels nice and solid. And a lot of these uh, pistol crossbows, or the, certainly these variations, are quite flimsy. Now as we look at this sight here, um, I'm not that impressed to be honest with you. It feels like it's mainly made of plastic apart from this bottom bit here which is uh, for the slide rail for the sight attachment at the top. It's got the battery cover at the front here that could easily come off um, but it's okay it's cheap and cheerful this device anyway um, so I can't expect too much. It just feels like they've just thrown this in though just for a bit of fun but it does look cool. Now you can just about see the red dot there just even on this Gosh, even on this black background, it's very, very faint. So I'll change the battery and see if that's any better uh, when I come to use it outside a little bit later. Now to the assembly. Well, what do we have here? Well, we've got a few tools that come as standard with it. We've got a few bolts, we've got the front grip, and we've got some Allen keys, of course. Well, let's just slide this on, see how this feels. Initial impressions are pretty good, feels quite solid. Gosh, even without the uh, bolts in place, it feels pretty good. It's best to put these things on a table before you actually screw them in place. So if one side of the bolt does go missing or flies off, at least you know roughly where it is. I've learnt from bitter mistake with this. It's disappeared into the abyss known as the floor. And uh, it's very frustrating when you're trying to put things together. So try and build it over something like a cloth like I'm doing. And it should reduce the chance of it bouncing and flying off somewhere. There's no sense in rushing when you're putting these things together because all it will do is just create frustration and it will take your enjoyment out of the actual building process. So all I'm doing is just taking my time here. You've got the little uh, bolts at the end here um, and you'll see that when they're undone there's a lot of threads here incidentally. It's obviously quite a strongly fitted device. Um, even with just one of these in place it feels extremely rigid. So I'm just putting the 
nut on the other side, putting the bolt through, and as you put it through your finger tight, you can sort of feel it touch your finger the other side. And then it's just a case of getting the Allen key and tightening it up. I'm just speeding this section up a little bit here, just to save you the boredom and uninteresting event known as tightening nuts and bolts. There you go, well it's all attached now. Looks pretty tidy this, doesn't it? Really cool. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we've got another Allen key and we've got to put the limb in place. Now you notice it's got these white markers. Now these are quite critical because these will allow you to evenly space the limb when it's attached to the crossbow pistol itself. In my hand here, I have a little rubber device. It's a dampening device. It's a rubber pad. It just takes the sting out of the vibration when you actually fire the thing. So you wanna hold that in place. And then as you're holding it, then you get hold of your limb. Um, it doesn't really matter which way round you put it. I just like the label to look like it's reading something I understand because it would just drive me absolutely nuts seeing words and letters upside down. So as I'm placing it in there, you notice how it's against the limb and you can just about see the white markers there. Now this is really, really important. Take your time with this guys because if you do get this wrong, Obviously you can change it, but it's very frustrating. You could damage the limb when you're firing it. It'll fire at a slight angle or a skew effect. And that's not good, especially when you're dealing with something that's designed to shoot straight. So we've got the other rubber part here, as I just demonstrated. And then we've got the metal plate that goes in last. Now this protects the limb and indeed the rubber pad in this case from damaging. Uh, because this little bolt at the front here will be squeezed in really tight, squeezing against these rubber pads and the limb holding it directly in place. Now I do it so it feels very snug as opposed to unbelievably tight. Uh, very snug is about right and after a few shots then I'll go and just tighten it up again if it needs doing. Uh, it usually will do. It's got like a settling in period as you'll find out. I checked to see if it needed tightening after about 10 or 15 shots. It was thereabouts and it just needed not even a quarter of a turn, about an eighth of a turn. So it did settle in a little bit, but that could have been due to the atmospheric conditions outside. Well, I'm happy with that. Uh, let's just have another quick look. Looks good that side. That side's just the rubber pad sticking out, but it looks nice and even. Okay, let's have a look at these sights here. Well, they are typical iron sights. You can slide them up and down on this little diagonal hill, if you like to call it that way. It's supposed to go in vertically or vertically down, and it's got an adjustment to go left and right. But I'm going to wrestle this off in a second. There you go, you just line it up like that. Normal sights. So there's no screws holding this in place. So let's see if I can pull this off. Crikey, that's a snug fit. I guess it has to be because it's got no screws. But anyway, let's remove this and put the cool looking gadget on the red dot side. Well, oh well, that slip slips on quite nicely. Gosh, very loose. Uh, just as well, it's got screws on the other side, so we'll just tighten those up here. And I use the most awkward screwdriver in the history of the planet here. It won't even hold the uh, end of it straight. It's unbelievable. So I just speeded this bit up just to save you the pain that I went through. Wow, that looks really good, doesn't it? And you don't feel the extra weight, so I guess it has to feel quite light. Mind you, I'm used to heavier optics than this with real glass in. This feels like it only had plastic, but it's a lot of fun and it looks pretty good, doesn't it? It's just another overview there of what the actual thing looks like. Right, so what do we have here? Well, we've got these limb protectors that go at the end here and your crossbow string goes on the end of these too. Um, these are going to be put on very snugly as well. You don't want these coming off and they shouldn't do when they're under tension anyway. Um, but they take off the sharp edges because the string will break. So it's all about looking after the string guys. It's very important you remember that. Crossbow strings are very sensitive as are the limbs. Um, which is ironic because they can take your fingers off if you leave them between the actual string and the limb itself when you fire it. So a lot of precautions you have to take with these things. Don't take them for granted. So you've got to make sure it's in place. I'm pushing it on a hard surface here just to make sure it's definitely in place, which it is. Okay, now you'll notice that we've got a little ridge there. That's going to be pointing forwards because it's also going to help any slippage that might potentially occur when you're either cocking the device or firing it. Okay, so let's just have a look at the front here just before I commit myself to stringing it. Yes, very happy. Everything's all nice and even. Happy is Larry with that. 
Okay, so we've got the string here. Now it's looping the string over the one side of the limb I choose at random. And in this case, it's the left-hand side. I'm just draping the string over uh, the actual guide rail itself in front of the cocking lever arms. It must be in front of these little arms. Just making sure it's attached there. So it's in front of those little black stoppers. And now grabbing the cable stringer, that's now gonna loop over that side. And that's gonna go on the correct side of the cocking arms because we're going to use this to pull the limbs back. I'm just going to drape this over to one side. It's got to go midway down because if you try and put it on the outer edge of the limb here on that right hand side in this case, it'll just keep pinging off. You won't be able to do it. Okay, so now I've got some slight tension and now I'm going to pull it back as hard as I can. The jaw strength on this cocking arm now is significantly higher than 60 pounds. I would guess at about 80 to 90 pounds. I'm a strong guy and I found this reasonably tricky to do. But if you do struggle, then get someone to help you do it at the same time. Now if you notice it's cocked back, and now lock it in place. And now it's a case of grabbing hold of the string that's left loose now. And I'm gonna make sure it reaches the other side, which it did. And now I'm gonna sort of loop it through the loops that is available. And you should be able to just pop it over the end here. When you've done that, point the crossbow in a safe direction and then fire it. Remove the string and cable, and as if by magic, you'll suddenly notice your crossbow string is now attached. However, there is a problem here. This string and cable that was provided with this crossbow was sadly too long, which meant that unfortunately it couldn't pull the limbs far enough back. This meant that I could not easily attach, in fact, well, I couldn't attach the crossbow string itself to the other end of the limb because the distance was too great. This string and cable was completely useless in the end as I had to eventually pull back on the limbs with my hands myself. This was actually quite a simple process to be fair. All I did was put the cocking lever into my stomach, pull back with all my might with both hands, therefore reducing the distance between the two limbs. My wife in turn was able to use a spare hand because I don't have three it seems, to then attach the loose end of the crossbow string to the available end of the limb. As soon as my wife attached the string to the limb, I was then able to release the pressure with my arms nice and slowly, and the string itself took up the strain. Although this was not the ideal of circumstances, we got there in the end, so I can't complain because the end result is excellent, as you can see in front of you. It's a fine looking piece of kit, this, and I cannot wait to use it, as you'll see in a moment. Just underneath the red dot size, you can see in front of you, there's the orange lever that you push forwards to release the safety catch. And at the rear, you've got the cocking button. So you press that down, which then releases the handle, and then it clicks back into place. As with most modern crossbows, the safety catch is automatically switched on as soon as it's cocked. I'm not actually convinced on the red dot sight at this stage, but time will tell. We'll soon find out what it performs like outside. Switching on the red dot sight is nice and easy. All you do is slide this little lever forwards. There is almost no resistance at all when sliding this forwards. Doesn't hold well with my confidence again. Red dot sight is of course fully adjustable. At the rear, there's a dial where you can go up and down with the sighting. And to the right hand side, there's a little twisty knob thing that allows you to go left and right. This crossbow set comes complete with three bare X bolts or darts or mini arrows, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they're reasonably well made, but no different from any other generic 6-7 to seven inch bolt manufacturer. Please remember, you're not forced into just keeping with one brand, i.e. Bare X. There are hundreds and hundreds of different varieties of bolts to choose from, as you will see. Plastic pistol crossbow bolts, try and say that if you've had a few to drink, are actually very good value for money, and they're very hard wearing. Not massively accurate when there's a slight wind, but there are lots of different colours and variations as you can see in front of you. Okay, now to set up our target. I'm using a Delta McKenzie Speed Bag 2020, which is more than sufficient for these sorts of darts and indeed crossbows up to 400 feet per second. I always take plenty of precautions when setting up targets and that includes a pussycat as you can see in front of you. No, I'm just kidding, there's three inches thick of wood, a metal plate and no neighbors around us. My little range is around about 12 meters long. Before I fire the crossbow for the first time, I like to add a little bit of extra wax. This helps to maintain the overall condition of the strings, therefore making them perform as well as they can. I just use the warmth of my finger temperature to warm the wax in. This also helps to make it go in where it should do, gets in all those little nooks and crannies.
I know a lot of people don't like or don't think that waxing the flight groove is a good idea, but to my mind, I think the less resistance, the better. A nice little slow motion shot of me walking past our roses. Couldn't resist it. Trust me, they smell absolutely gorgeous. OK, back to crossbow safety now. Only cock the crossbow just before you intend to fire it. This is one of the very few weapons that's just as lethal when there's nothing inside it because the string itself can dismember a finger or even a limb. With that in mind, when you're loading the bolt on top of the flight groove, always keep your fingers on the top. This is so that if the string does accidentally go off for whatever the reason, your fingers don't get caught. As I've mentioned before, the safety catches go on automatically when they cock on modern crossbows, but it's always best to check. OK, now to the fun bit. I can't see the red dot sight, and this is my first ever shot. This doesn't shoot as slowly as this. This is literally in slow motion, so you can see how it actions. As you can see from that initial shot, that's way, way too high. And subsequently, I thought this was too dangerous to use, even when I had a new battery inside it. Thankfully, I remembered to bring out the iron sights with me, which I didn't think I would need, but I'm glad I got them. Oh well, what a shame. It looks like I'm back to the iron sights after all, so I'm going to have to take this off. Just have another quick look, just to make sure it's just not me playing silly buggers with my old age. Nope. But it's a real shame, but my instinct was certainly correct because it didn't feel good quality even in my little studio. Please comment below guys if you have had any problems with these sites or indeed if you've had no issues with these sites. I might be just unlucky here, so I'm willing to keep an open mind. Either way, I've still got a pair of sites to shoot with, so I'm happy either way. Thankfully these little plastic iron sights are easy to pop on. Even though you can see I'm struggling here, they're just a very snug fit, that's all. There you go, I'm just checking there, nicely lined up. And back to traditional iron sight shooting, it seems. Well, let's give this a shot. No pun intended. Ha <laughs> ha! I left these sights in the position they came in through the post. For some reason, I always feel like I have a lot more control, more confidence when using traditional iron sights. I'm just getting myself settled here, getting used to the pistol crossbow. Of course, making sure my fingers are on top of the bolt. I know it probably doesn't look like it, but I'm actually having a lot of fun here and I'm extremely excited about trying these sights out. This pistol crossbow actually feels as good as it looks. I like holding this. I'm just settling myself down to the shot here, get myself nicely composed, get my breathing under control, and just gently as I exhale, I'm now lightly squeezing the trigger. That's better, and it's relatively central too. I knew it was only 12 metres away, but I literally couldn't see where it hit, hence I had to go and check. Just a small adjustment on the size by dropping the distance down by 2 centimetres. Hopefully this will be an improvement. And it went down by about two inches there, so not too bad. Another quick adjustment. Literally almost there, so I'm quite happy with this. With huge amounts of confidence now growing, I decided to go to the bottom left. It's a much smaller target, but I thought gravity might lend me a hand here. Just an experiment. Wow, I am some happy with that. Now it's time to go to the centre target again and see how this goes. The more you shoot these crossbows, the more confidence you get and the more understanding you get about how they feel. It was not the inaccuracy of the crossbow that didn't hit the target, it was me pulling it slightly to the right as I shot. 
I'm noticing that the rain is about to hit as the clouds are looming massively in the distance there so I'm just going to have a bit of fun just whacking out a few bolts at the target. In the past I've been asked if crossbows behave like a gun. Do they give a kick back? Uh, well, no they don't. They don't kick back but they actually pull forwards because that's where the energy is going. It pulls you forwards, not backwards. It's not like a bullet that pushes back to then propel itself forwards. It throws itself forwards. I know you probably can't see the rain here, but I thought I'd just quickly zoom forward to show you that I've been filming with a GoPro, and this is where I've been hitting. Very reluctantly, I now have to pick up this wonderful bag and return back to my little studio before I get absolutely soaked. Now that I'm inside, let's go through some of the legal ramifications when purchasing crossbows. If you live in England, Ireland, Scotland or Wales, you must be over the age of 18 to purchase a crossbow. Anyone under the age of 18 is allowed to fire a crossbow, so long as they have adult supervision at all times. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, hunting has been outlawed with crossbows in this country. This also applies to normal bows and arrows. When firing one of these crossbows, you really must be quite sensible, as most people are very, very intimidated by them and yet they're no less lethal than a bow and arrow. So much so that some archery clubs won't accept them in their clubs either. OK, let's get back to the Bear X Desire RD. This is a very lightweight, capable pistol crossbow. This is light, solidly built and feels nice in the hand. For £59.99 or just under £60, I feel that it represents reasonable value for money. The red dot sight that is included is very cheaply made and has an extremely dim light, certainly in the example that I had. The stringing cable that was included with this crossbow was too long and this resulted in me having to use another human being to utilise their hands to help me put the string on. With the front grip attached, the pistol crossbow feels very sure footed in the hand and as a result feels like a mini assault rifle. Sadly the trigger is non-adjustable but at this price point I think the trigger weight was just about right. Now for the pros and cons. Well, it's great fun, represents excellent value for money, and it actually feels pretty good too. The bad side was uh, it had a terrible red dot sight and the string cable was not the correct length. But apart from that, I would definitely recommend getting this. What a load of fun. For loads more content, guys, please like and subscribe. See you again soon.